We're now just a few days on from one of the worst tragedies in Jersey in living memory. Islanders are struggling to come to terms with the events on Pier Road of last Saturday morning the 10th of December. With nine Islanders missing after a major blast rocked St Helier, the island is still in shock. Expert teams are still searching the site at Hodemont Flats for evidence, and with the even tougher objective of confirming exactly what happened to the Islanders who lost their lives. It's only to be expected that ever since the explosion, just before four o'clock early on Saturday, information as to the cause has been steadily coming out, but mixed in with rumour and supposition. Joining me, James Filial, now on the Bailiwick podcast is one of our senior reporters, Julian Morell. Julian's been following the events ever since last Saturday morning. So, Julian, maybe we need to start with probably the most macabre question, but perhaps we can confirm as of now how many people uh, do we know have definitely lost their lives in the explosion? So it's been confirmed uh, as of Wednesday afternoon that eight people have lost their lives in the explosion early on Saturday morning, um, which destroyed a six-unit apartment block on Haute de Mont on Pier Road, um, which was a development which was owned and run by the social housing provider Andium Homes. Uh, One person is still missing. Um, We also know that uh, two people, as of yesterday, um, are still in hospital, but their injuries are, are not thought to be serious. That was said at a press conference yesterday. Okay, so th- the obvious question that people have been asking this week, and appreciate that details are still coming out and the position is still you know, very unclear, but how much further forward have we been? You've been to all the press conferences ever since the first one on Saturday, and you've asked a lot of questions at those, and I know you've read all the information that's been in the public domain. H- how much further forward are we to... Uh, start to establish a picture of what happened well i think one of the key things to stay from the outset is the cause of the explosion is still being investigated and that will take a long time before um, we have any sense of truth any sense of 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 closure of of what actually happened and 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 many people are involved in that investigation there is a working assumption and there's been a working uh, assumption since uh, very early on really from sunday that the explosion was likely caused by gas um, for the reason being that explosions of this ferocity are normally caused by gas. But that's not been proven and that's not to say that that, that is the cause in this case. Who's establishing that? Well, independent fire experts are seeking to identify the cause. The Chief Fire Officer of the uh, States of Jersey Fire and Rescue Service has invited uh, outside experts to come in and to independently assess uh, all the angles, all the evidence to establish the truth. In parallel to this, the police are also conducting a criminal investigation and Haute de Mont, that area, is, uh, has been classed as a, as a crime scene. The, the Chief uh, Police Officer told us that yesterday. That investigation is being led by a senior Jersey officer uh, Alison Fossey, Detective Superintendent Alison Fossey, who is a very experienced officer. And she has a team of uh, of 20 detectives working with her uh, and also a number of uh, advisors uh, who have come over from the UK to assist in that investigation as well. So there are a number of professionals who are uh, currently trying to seek the truth. OK, so the, the, the word you used there at the beginning was was likely caused by gas, which I know was the word used by the Chief of Police, Robin Smith. Um, What else has built up around that? So what have we heard from uh, Islands Energy, who obviously are the gas utility supplier in Jersey? Well, we've got Islands Energy, but we've also got Andy and Home. So let's let's go through what we what we know. We know um, from Andium and also from uh, Island Energy that that Haudemont um, was not connected to gas for either cooking or heating. Um, Gas had supplied the estate, but Andium, the the, uh, social homes uh, provider who own and operate the uh, estate, um, have said in the past, been very open that we want to move away from, we want to move our entire estate 
away from gas. And so they are decommissioning all their properties, uh, really from the perspective of, of their, their carbon neutral uh, aims and aspirations. Jersey as, a, as, a, as an island uh, wants to achieve carbon neutra- net zero carbon neutrality by 2015. Adium is, is, is playing its role by, by, uh, by disconnecting um, its properties from gas. Um, it, they've confirmed that um, there was, however, a redundant island energy supply to Haute de Mont, but all users had been removed from it. Um, the state's own company also confirmed in that in September it had instructed Island Energy to disconnect that redundant supply from their mains network off-site. Um, and we also know that the, the last tenant using gas at Haudemont, who importantly didn't live in the in the affected block, moved over from gas to electric um, that month in September. So uh, that's what we do know. Uh, Island uh, Island Energy have told us their their CEO um, Joe Cox on uh, Monday gave a, a press briefing to confirm that the Hodemont was not on uh, not on mains uh, the mains gas supply, which uh, which means that it, it was it was connected, albeit a redundant connection by a by a, a mm-hmm. tributary by a by a branch line which which would have connected into the mains. Okay, so what what do we know beyond that though, or is this where we get into supposition? Is there anything? Is there any more information as to where that gas might have come from than if the the block itself wasn't connected to gas? What 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 do we know? Yes, yeah, so yeah, there, there there is a, a tremendous amount of speculation, and we we really do have to focus on the facts. So, um, Mrs. Cox confirmed at a press briefing on Monday that the the company had carried out recent work at the site before the before Saturday's explosion, um, but she hasn't gone into the details of that work um, or, or whether it was the, the disconnection work that Andium had asked them to do in September. Um, it, just to, to give you a, a statement from um, from Island Energy, um, they, they did confirm that in line with Andium's earlier statement, there was a redundant Island Energy supply at Hodemont, uh, and there was no gas being consumed by either Andium or their residents on the site. Um, and they went on to say outside of this, the spokesperson said, we're unable to comment on any details regarding works carried on the property last week, as this is part of of an investigation as such it would be inappropriate to discuss any information at this time and i think people would understand that the investigation has to come has to take precedence over over any speculation of course um so uh, we 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 have obviously got some some visual things we've got some activity which is going on which um, which adds to the narrative uh, that those are facts they are happening one of them is there there have been roadworks um operated by by the gas company along commercial buildings very close to um, Haudemont, um, uh, along along the commercial building's bottom, and um, that at the moment is being um, guarded by uh, by police. Uh, however, after the press conference yesterday, uh, Mr. Smith did say that the the police presence was was there to um, protect the or, or to secure buildings that may have been damaged in the blast along commercial buildings and to regulate people coming in and out of those buildings. And just tell us about the the Friday evening, the night before, because there has been the suggestion that, and I think the fire service have to confirm that they were called to the site. Again, uh, we've got to to, to, to base uh, on confirmed facts, and this has been confirmed by uh, the Chief Fire Officer Paul Brown at a press conference, uh, that the Fire and Rescue Service was called to Haute de Mont at 2036 on Friday night. And they left at 21.01, so about 25 minutes later, and they handed over to Island Energy, who were on the scene. Just explaining that relationship, Mrs Cox said on Monday that uh, whenever uh, gas, whenever a call comes into the emergency services number or uh, by any, um, which could involve anything involving gas, if gas is suspected, then it is a matter of policy and procedure that uh, Island Energy is called at the same time and an engineer will attend the site in parallel uh, with the fire service. So what looks as though what's happened is that, that both have attended the scene and around 25 minutes afterwards, the fire service have, have handed over to Island Energy. But we, to, to, to stress, we don't know any of the detail around that. And indeed, questions that have been asked um, 
for information on that, uh, for more information around that, uh, the the answer has been very clear and understandable. It's all part of the investigation. It has to feed into that. So um, we can't comment further. Okay. All right. So that's everything we do know for now. Just to finish off with then, what do you expect uh, to happen next? What are the next steps, just briefly? Well, we are, uh, we still have one person missing uh, and uh, th- that, that the, the search and recovery phase will not stop until that, 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 that the final person is, is, is recovered. After that, uh, I imagine it will move into the uh, investigation phase and uh, the, obviously in parallel that to the, 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 the victims will be, will be treated with all the dignity and respect that they deserve. Uh, the investigation will carry on and there are dozens and dozens of people both from the fire and ambulance and uh, the, 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 the Viscount. There's all sorts of agencies who will be involved to, to get to the truth of this matter. We may not get it tomorrow, we may not get it for months, but I imagine there is a concerted and unified effort to get to the bottom of this. Julie Morrell, thanks very much. So you can stay fully up to date with that story as it develops uh, over the coming days, weeks, and perhaps longer than that as the investigation continues, either on bailiwickexpress.com and our various channels, or of course in our sister publication, the JEP. We'll be doing our best uh, over that time period, as we have over the last week, to bring you uh, up-to-date and accurate information as soon as we have it. But for now, from me, James Filial, thanks for listening. Thank you.